Hi, I'm Dr. Randy Martin. We're here at the 2023 AATS Module Conclave, as you can see behind me, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Patrick Perrier. Patrick, who's a, a wonderful surgeon and a good guy and a wonderful guy, we'll say that, I give you two, two credits. So Patrick, you've been um, really foremost in minimally invasive mitral surgery. Where do you think the field is and where is it going? We were among the first to start back in the 2000, and the path was difficult, and uh, we had to discover many different things, but now we can do very stable and very reproducible surgery in a very good time, an excellent result, and for the patient, it is amazing. Their rehabilitation is much faster. So the patients benefit a lot from this. The problem is that we are just a small number of people doing this. And our goal is to enlarge our group so that it can be available to all the patients. Right. And for this, we have founded a club, which, <laughs> <laughs> which is called the Endoscopic Cardiac Surgeons Clubs. And we try to motivate people and to, to help them to start program and do programs. And uh, by the way, we have a meeting in Milano in November, and uh, we encourage anyone who is uh, interested in minimally invasive surgery to come to this meeting. So when you say minimally invasive, you're really speaking about endoscopic. People would not put robotic in that category. Randy, this is a very good question because Minimally invasive surgery is a kind of spectrum. Big, it covers a lot of things. There is no definition except the fact that everything which is not medium sternotomy can be considered minimally invasive. So we are a little bit freaks. And for us, minimally invasive surgery is totally endoscopic surgery. Robotic is something a little bit different, although we belong to the same family. And we can say that we are cousins. So it obviously took a while. It's any new technology. I mean, the mitral valve repair took a while to come about. And we were talking about that earlier. I mean, when I was at Stanford in the days, there was, it was replacement. You know, it was all replacement. Is the slowness in, in part due to slowness of technology advances? In other words, your scopes, your techniques? Or is it slowness because it just was hard, to, hard for people to accept it? It's very interesting. Like it has been slow in the beginning, even for us, because we had to overcome a lot of obstacles, technical obstacles technical obstacle. that we have. But, you know, whenever you bring something new to people, it's very interesting to see their reaction. And most of the time, the reaction is very negative, if not violent. And before... The concept is accepted. You need a long time, and you need to be patient. It's exactly the same thing that happened for right. mitral valve repair. Is who would not be a candidate today for endoscopic mitral surgery? Our only contraindication uh, are those patients with the big bars of calcium of the posterior annulus okay. because okay. our instruments are too fragile for okay. this. Okay patients with adhesions of the lungs sure. because the way sure. is not sure. free. But otherwise, we don't even think reduce. reduce, you can't do it. But you have an easier exposure of the mitral valve than reduce. So you obviously spent time with Carpentier and were trained exactly. that way. And you, with looking at what you learned with him and learned going forward about open uh, sternotomy mitral surgery, you're just as happy with this approach surgically. Do you see what I'm saying? You had street cred for being an excellent mitral valve surgeon. Yes, because I would say that I applied the Carpentier principles, and you should not compromise. You should apply the techniques exactly the same one that you would do through sternotomy. Excellent, excellent. Last question. We're here at the conclave. You've been to many conclaves, been featured at the conclaves. A meeting like this is a uh, club my trial on steroids or something. I mean, what, what are your thoughts about the conclave? The mitral valve surgeons are like a family. And so this is almost like a family <laughs> gathering. You know? it's, a little bit, it's a big family. But this time it's particularly interesting that we meet friends that we have not met for some time. 
And I think that it's very good to be able to go in depth on the subject of mitral valve and to open our mind because that's the most important thing. Usually our minds are closed. We need from time to time to open our mind. And this is a very good opportunity. It, you know, advance the field because, I mean, you're all interested in advancing the field and helping the patients. Yeah. So when is the upcoming endoscopic meeting again? It's in November? It's in November in Milano. Okay. All yeah. Right. So that's, it, that's it, a pitch. <laughs> you're most welcome to work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, well, so thank you for joining us. It was great, always great. To thank be. you, Ronnie. And thank you for joining us. A fascinating concept. Go to Milan in November, it sounds like. Thanks.